the end of the day, the First Amendment is all about freedom of speech, but it's for everyone, including President Trump. Hey everyone, welcome to On the Streets. I am Genevieve Wood with The Daily Signal, and we are on the streets of Washington, D.C., right outside the museum, which of course hosts exhibits uh, for all kinds of news media, print, television, radio, the like, online. The reason we're out here today is because you may have heard the Boston Globe has said that it would like to encourage newspapers around the country, their editorial pages, to all print editorials tomorrow talking about the importance of a free and independent press. And they say they're doing that because they believe Donald Trump has been making, uh, well, he's been making some critical marks about the news media. So we wanted to come out and find out what other people think about that. And we found one gentleman who's visiting D.C. from the great state of Pennsylvania. How are you, sir? Good. So you're in, in D.C. just doing some tourist time? Yes. What brought you to the museum? Uh, we've been here before. Uh, we think it's important. We think that, you know, we've learned a lot. We think the media is a really powerful tool in the U.S. So what do you think about the Boston Globe trying to organize newspapers around the country on one day to come out and talk about the importance of a free press, but doing so because they think that President Trump's remarks have been too critical about the media? Well, I think it is really important for all the newspapers to get together and talk about the power of a free media. The reason why they're doing it, because of Trump, that scares you in a way. You know, I'm not going to put my views on the table here, but I do think it's important for us to try to stay balanced. And that it seems to be going away these days. Is it balanced, though, when you have 200 outlets on the same day? I mean, how, how independent is that when they say we have to all join ranks here? Well, I, I think that's part of the challenge. But I do think it's, it's important for them to stay together. You know, I've traveled a lot of places. I've gone to a lot of parts of the world where they don't have a free media. And I think it's important for the media to stay together. You know, you may have 200 outlets all talking about this, but they may say different things. They may not all be pro-Trump or anti-Trump. So I think it's actually a good idea, but I think it's important for us as citizens to try to stay balanced and read from a variety of sources. Don't stick to one, you know, one source of media. Look, look at media from a lot of different angles, and then you can make up your own mind. You are a very smart man because if you only read one source or watch one source, you're not going to get all. You're not going to get all sides. Let's talk about just the First Amendment, which is about freedom of, of the press. It's part of what it's about. Everybody has a right to speak their mind. Uh, does that extend to the president? Of course it does. I mean, everyone has the right to speak their mind, and the president has the right to say whatever he likes. Although he does have some, he has to realize as the president, his words carry a lot of weight. And there are definitely consequences to everything that he says. And I think that's part of the challenge. You know, it's very different for me to go out and start to say whatever I want to say. But as a president, millions of people are going to listen to what I have to say. Millions of people will react based on what I have to say. And I think that requires sort of a different level of scrutiny and, a, and being a lot more careful. You have the right to do whatever you want. Yes, the First Amendment gives you that right. But there are consequences to that and there are responsibilities with that. And I think that's the part that's missing. Okay, final question for you. Uh, when I looked at the, I went back and looked at the endorsements back in the 2016 campaign of all the different newspapers around the country. And of those on the larger side, anybody who had 20,000 or more uh, readership views, over 240 of them endorsed Hillary Clinton. I think 19 endorsed Donald Trump, which just kind of shows maybe why he feels a little bit at times as though he's not getting fair coverage. I mean, does that you can't force papers to be balanced, but does that concern you that, that so many outlets would endorse one candidate over the other? Not necessarily. I mean, again, I think in today's world, there's plenty of news out there. I mean, you could say, yeah, there are 240 people who uh, endorse Hillary, 19 that endorse Trump. If you're a Trump supporter, it's very easy for you to find news that's on your side. You know, and I think if you went back and looked at other elections, I wonder what that balance would be. I don't know. You may know, but, you know, that coming into this election, yeah, the media was clearly on one side. That's not true of every election. If that starts to become true of every election, then I think we have a much bigger problem on our hands. Hey, thank you very much for talking with us. You are one of the more informed people that we have found on the streets. Right, thank thank you, you, sir. Have a good one. So we have one of the folks we're going to talk with us here, and his name is Clay. Clay is actually from Virginia, and Clay has been uh, interning with us at the Daily Signal and Heritage uh, over this course of the summer. Thank, first of all, thank you for your work, Clay. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so you heard my discussion here with this gentleman, and you, you know what's going on in the story. What do you think about, about this issue? 
Um, for me, I'm a really, I'm a STEM guy when it comes to school, right? And I like having facts. I like being able to say hey, yes. Tell everybody what STEM is. Oh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And I like to be able to say, yes, gravity is here, and this is what happens off of gravity. And I like to do that, too, when I look at politics and policy to see what's w right and what's wrong. So I believe that the media, yes, bias is bad, but I believe that the media should be reporting the facts, what's actually happening, instead of trying to confuse the American people. Because if we become confused, there's n we don't know where to vote. We don't know who to vote for. And then that destroys the democracy that we live in. You are smart. Yeah. How smart is he? Seriously. Uh, okay, let me ask you this, because you are in high school. Uh, what, what grade are you going to be in? I will be in the 10th grade this okay. year. So where do most people your age, where do you think most of them, to the extent they follow what's happening in politics and news, wh what do they follow? I think most kids my age, and me personally, I get a lot of my news off of Snapchat um, through the different filters and everything on the Discovery side. And I believe that that side is mainly liberal-based. So if we can have more viewpoints on the Snapchat platform, that would be good. So you're not going to be reading most of these editorials tomorrow? Is that what you're telling me? I will. <laughs> but I don't think kids my age will be as much. <laughs> Clay, thank you for talking with us. Appreciate it. Uh, we wanted to give people some different perspectives here. And so, again, we're outside the museum. Uh, this may not be something you're, you've been familiar with, but apparently over 200 newspapers have signed up to do this. It was led by the Boston Globe. They're the ones encouraging everybody. Uh, Dan Rather, by the way, for those of you who remember who he is, also has signed up uh, for this effort. And, again, their goal, according to the tweet that went out, was that they want to publish editorials on the importance, I want to be able to say exactly what they said, on the importance of a free free and independent press, and they'll be doing this tomorrow, August 16th. Of course, I would argue it's not particularly independent when everybody gets together on the same day uh, to do it. And as I discussed with our first gentleman, when you have over 240 editorial pages that endorse one candidate, being Hillary Clinton in 2016, and only 19, the largest of which was, I believe, the Las Vegas uh, Review Journal endorsing President Trump, you don't see a very balanced press. And of course, it's not just on the print side. If you look at studies of, of broadcast outlets being the major networks, if you look at the first four months of this year, 90% of the stories covering President Trump's administration were negative. If you look at that exact same period, go back to 2015 when President Barack Obama was president, only 10% of the stories were negative. So at the end of the day, the First Amendment is all about freedom of speech, but it's for everyone including President Trump. Thanks, everybody. We will see you back here next time on the streets.